Hey heroes, welcome back to Heroes of the Horn, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am Sir Matt. And I am Sir Ezra. And friends, we're back with uh, a little something special here. Kind of a an little. empire. I, 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 well, I, an, an empire of stuff, I guess, if you will. But this is coming from an, an empire um, magazine interview, I think, that was done with Rafe Judkins. Yeah, this, um, you know, we were diving back into the books, but man, this came up and we're just like, okay, well, we're let's just fire this out because it's big and it's just easy to kind of click through. So, yeah, there was an interview with Rafe Judkins, obviously showrunner, seat of the Wheel of Time, and he basically goes over a lot of the decisions they made and ev everything. I mean, it's like 23 points here. We're going to go through all of them, but it, it's sort of, he talks about the development, like before the show came out and during filming why things are and a little bit about season two so it's just kind of interesting fascinating. um it's really fascinating there's definitely some stuff where i'm like okay that makes sense and that causes me to sort of react to view some of the things a little differently there's some things that he says on that i call bs on and uh that's you know it's okay I, we read it you know read it for what it is and that's just kind of where i'm at but definitely some things i'm like okay i can see that or may, i can understand why they would make that decision and then others where yeah. i'm like i still think your decision was wrong so we're gonna dive into it for both because we have a lot of people here as that absolutely yeah. you know positive people and a lot of people who don't like it so we're as, as we're gonna play both sides here i'm down but, i'm down to right yeah. like the white cloaks they play both sides <laughs> they do right whatever works <laughs> so yeah so what this was is empire magazine um it was an interview and uh shout out to this guy here this is where i saw uno's eye patch on twitter sort of broke it all down and he's got it into a lot of different points here uh, and i think as we're gonna have them uh, up on the screen as well yeah. uh, and a nice little powerpoint doc he typed up so it just makes it easier uh, right to kind of see so this one's really interesting actually because this it has to have been before the show started mm -hmm. so it says point number one just take these are sort of takeaways from that interview race explained he was given a 250 page doc by amazon from book readers about what they felt could be improved and one of the main issues was matt's under development so they gave him a backstory to deepen his struggle with being a hero so this is before before, obviously the show so this is yeah. before season one and this is some of the reason that they decided to change matt a little bit right. um i'll say this and again i think we've all we've all kind of i think even people who are kind of out on the show i think we've all pretty much agreed that we all really enjoyed barney harris's acting now he's going to be gone but I think the acting across the board, I enjoyed and liked. There was any issue I had, I felt like was clearly a script driven issue. Um, but I do, I do know right off the bat, uh, my brother, you know, my brother, Jeremy, he's one of our, uh, he's, he's written and stuff to me and I've brought it up mm -hmm. on the show and stuff like yeah. that. And this is one of the things he was like, at first he was, like, he really did not like the, the sort of change to Matt's character that we get in like episodes one and two. Right. And, you know, Matt is like stealing, right, to help his sisters out. Uh, I guess I did you do you feel that Matt's character is a little underdeveloped in the first in the first book? See, I don't know, um, because I feel like Perrin at the same time was also about like, like when you start the story, they're just these he ran. It's about his backstory, and he meets these two friends who feel like they're just two buddies that are in the town, different, different upbringings, different whatever, but you learn about them along the way, and I feel like you learn a lot about Matt along the way. You learn a lot about Perrin. I feel like over the course of the whole story, you probably do get more uh, context, and there is more an, um, of an emotional connection to Perrin because of the loss of his family and everything that he kind of goes through the two rivers and once matt leaves the two rivers besides like running into his sister and some other uh, of, of the girls from the two rivers yeah i i, I do kind of get it but they both felt that way so i don't know if that's gonna be a point that comes up here in a second because i haven't read every single one of these these bullet points right but the idea that if you needed to do this for matt i feel like well they also did that for Perrin, kind of but they were kind of trying to accelerate parents arc along further but now right. they've added this layer of a Gwen as backstory you know what i mean which right they really they, they took that moment and blew that up and then they also did this with matt and his father and his mother so yeah i guess yeah. i mean 
You know? Yeah, I guess I, I could I could see the idea. I can see how somebody could perceive Matt's story as underdeveloped because it doesn't really start like Matt takes the longest to sort of start because of his tie right. with the dagger mm -hmm. before you really get Matt as the character he is through the majority of it. It takes like really like book three until you really sort of get Matt as the character he is. Um, I Ultimately, you know, I was fine with it. I didn't really have an issue with him it was just a different a different take on it and then he gets yeah. the dagger and he is kind of the you know he is kind of the matt with the dagger where he's kind of a jerk and not pleasant to be around right right but that's just the darkness from the dagger and then he totally changes to the sort of fun goofy you know almost comedic relief character for a lot of stuff in bars you know pinching girls and you know all all of, all of that right yeah but um yeah i don't know that i would say he's underdeveloped i guess though is I'm surprised that I'm, I'm curious. I'm really curious about this sort of document they got that said mm -hmm. that this, that was one of the things that Amazon, this, this document, right? 250 page document from Amazon from book readers, you know, who yeah. did they go ask how many book readers were in this study for them to all, I mean, 250 pages is a lot. For yeah. them to say, so is this is the majority of Wheel of Time readers saying if you're going to a before the show, if you're going to adapt this, we this is something we would fix because there's a lot of stuff I would fix in the mm -hmm. show. There's stuff I think they've done that is better, and there's stuff there that I think I would that I would be fine cutting out. But that's not, I guess, that's not for me a change I particularly would feel the need to make. Yeah, that, I know. I, I was this was a shocking change to me. Uh, a Abel Cawthon is his father is somebody who we really like. And so it's a change for Matt that helps him grow as a character. But boy, it really puts his father down like a, a rung or two, even though he's not like a major character. It was still right. really cool to see him and Tam Althor be close and to be kind of friends later on in the series. And that's not necessarily I, I guess there's a, a, a an option there for his father to have some redemption or whatever, but it just, I don't know. He looks so bad right now, the way he's painted. It's, it's rough to see a comeback for it, but I'm not like completely opposed to it. It does totally, it doesn't totally change Matt for me, but it does for, I think people right. who weren't book readers, it is an emotional connection. There is something you're, you're like, wow, I feel for that character and his sisters. And yeah. Stuff. So, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I guess maybe the idea was if you have him like stealing, it's going to show later when he gets his luck mm -hmm. that, now he no longer needs to do that. And so that sort of, sh sh I guess, to the audience can quickly kind of show, oh, hey, like the, you know, power and all the, to be in and all this stuff that's going on with him, like this is sort of the power of that. So maybe that's another reason they, uh, they kind of did this. So, okay, let's move on to the.